Welcome to our channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab and along with my husband Chris, we do thrift flips. We take unwanted, unloved, outdated thrift store finds and then we give them new life. And on our channel, we share the process with you all. So here is a collection of thrifted finds. These items are pretty much I would say outdated, unloved, unwanted, and they were at a thrift store. So I am ready to make these items over and give them new life. And then I was very happy to run across this four-piece canister set and this cute little box with a ceramic tile in it. I would say that these are your common finds, your common little ceramic pottery pieces that you find in your thrift store on an average daily basis. So it's so nice to get an idea of what we can do to transform these unwanted pieces. So I'm going to start right off with getting these lids updated. And of course, removing anything that I can take apart to paint them separately and especially not painting over one of these price tags. So I'm going to go through and give these a scuff sanding where I just take a little bit of that manufacturer's top coat off. And on these thrifted items, a lot of times it's already kind of flaking off already. So I'm going to get these storage cleaners up by soaking them in some hot water and some Dawn dish soap, getting any food particles, any grease grime that's left behind and removing any manufacturer's tags. Though I really liked the oval on these storage containers, it was already scraping off before I even got to it. So just soaking them in some hot water and using a razor blade, it's coming right off. I'll put something back on, but I'm not going to be reusing that chippy paint. So for the lids, I'm just going to be using some of this crud cutter, just spraying it on and then wiping it off, making sure that anything that might be left behind, even though I sanded it, that doesn't mean that your grime and grease isn't isn't still there. So this is a nice prep and I like these kind of preps because I don't have to rinse it. We don't have water in our workshop. So Crud Cutter is a nice prep for these. So to get a nice smooth paint job, I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one. And the nice thing about it, it works for metals, it works for wood. So for these items, I'm going to be doing that texture paint where you're using that baking soda to cover up what was already on these pieces. And then for these little animal pieces, just, yep, some chalk paint and some baking soda to give it that nice texture. So I believe you can use your baking soda with any paint that you want. I just happen to have these colors that I'm looking for on hand that are in chalk paint. And then the baking soda is going to give it that texture that I'm looking for a little bit more grit to stick on these crock ceramic type of pieces. So it's just equal parts. And then if you need to add a little bit of water, go ahead and add a little bit of water. So for these pieces, I'm just going to start right off with using that baking soda chalk paint mixture and just wiping it on. It's a textured paint. It's going to go on a little bit on the rough side, but that's what you want. And I know that that first coat is not going to cover. They're a little bit on the shiny side, so it will kind of slide around just a little bit. So I will say that I think I should have probably sprayed this little piggy first with something to get this paint to adhere a little bit better. But by the time I realized that, I almost had the little piggy all the way done with the first coat of chalk paint. So I'm just going to add some cure time to this pig at the end to make sure that this paint is good and on there. So then for these other pieces, I knew that I was going to need to get them sprayed with something. So I'm going back to that at first I thought I was going to use the chalk paint in the spray can but I'm like oh that white is not going to cover up those dark leaves so it's not going to cover up anything on the outside of this. So I went back to my Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the black. I know that this is going to cover up any designs on the outside of these cracks. I don't want to finish that and painting it and still be able to see that design. I want to change it to something else. So I'm curious what you guys all use when you do your 
item flips like this because when I was using that chalk paint first, I could already tell it wasn't adhering to that crack at all. It was just running down. So I definitely had to go back through and wipe that off and re-wash that. But this rustoleum seems to be staying in place and not being runs and drips. For me, the nice thing about working on a group of items is I'm always waiting for paint to dry, so now I can go in and work on this canister set. This canister set is already the white that I like, so I'm just going to be making some labeling, some stamps from these crockery stamps using tissue paper and Maj Paj and the IOD crockery marmalade stamps i'm oh i just am in love with these and i already did one set of these and they already sold so that's how i do it if it sells yep i'll make another one and if it sells i'll make another one but there's no sense of going crazy if nobody wants to buy it out of my booth so for me with this set of four crockery stamps i am looking for the all the ones that say marmalade and i'm going from the biggest down to the smallest. So it's nice that they kind of cling onto the item like this so I can really see if it's the size appropriate that I want. So I am using your guys' suggestion of a stamp in this on tissue paper. The first set I did, I did on cardstock, though I didn't mind it and I thought it adhered real well. I wanted to check the tissue paper technique out. So then I'm just using that stays on ink and the nice thing about when you're stamping it onto paper is if you don't like your stamp you just keep on stamping until you do like your stamp. I just put that hard plastic piece underneath my tissue paper that comes on the stamps. I really like my Cricut mat and I'm not ready to really get it all stamped up yet. sure on this stamp if I was getting the ink on there properly so I removed it off the clear acrylic block and then I'm just stamping it on my hand just so it has a little bit more flexibility but after my second stamp I realized it's just the way that the stamp presses out. So now that I have them all stamped out and the ones that didn't work out oh well now I just am going to cut out the ones I do want. So since this tissue paper is so thin, I didn't really feel a need to put the Maj Paj underneath it. I'm sure that you can. I felt like it would be going all the way through. The one thing I was scared of is that it was going to make the ink bleed, but plenty of people have showed this, so I'm pretty sure that it will be okay. But yep, I had a little bit of nervousness that my black ink was going to bleed. But as you see, I'm just applying the Maj Paj, poured it in a bowl. I don't like to dip right out of the container because I don't like to contaminate with anything into the container. So yep, I'm just getting into those grooves, putting plenty of Maj Paj on. I can always wipe the excess off, but I want to make sure that it's good and adhered, and especially in these little grooves. I did the exact same process to the rest of the other three containers, but I, the one thing I did do is make sure that I had it measured down an inch. The first one I did was measured down to inch, so I want to make sure the rest of them so they have uniformity. So now that I'm waiting for Maj Paj to dry, I can go in on my lids on the side that I just finished up getting that Rust-Oleum paint on. I'm going to seal that Rust-Oleum paint in with some polycrylic so these can have longevity and be used. These are a kitchen item usually so I want to make sure that that paint is sealed on there and polycrylic will definitely do the job. Then I'm also going in with these Crocs too. I'm sealing that Rust-Oleum paint in. I don't want that Rust-Oleum paint to end up blending with the chalk paint that I'm going to be putting on top of these. So there's nothing wrong with giving a little bit more extra protection. I did forget to share that tip of using lint rollers to make your round object not roll while you're working on it. And though I really was on the fence, I really did like how these marmalade jars turned out before I even antiqued them. But my initial vision, I still wanted to antique them. I think that's the thing that makes it pop. So if you're doing this at home and you have a 
white container like this yeah I could have definitely left it just the way that I was going to be finishing off the top I wanted to tie that all together but I did like it just the tissue paper alone with the white for me, so my antiquing wax didn't go too dark, I watered it down and I made sure that my Maj Paj would dry before adhering it. And then I just went back around and cleaned off any excess that got onto the ceramic. See what I mean with the turmoil? I'm like, oh, I like those. But, oh, but I, yep, I already did one in the antiquing, so the rest of them are getting the antique too. So I, I'm waiting for the antique. Like I said, I'm always doing something, waiting for something to dry. That's that's the nice thing about this round robin game of doing a lot of items. So I had picked up these canvases for a dollar nine at my local Goodwill, and I thought, what can I do with them? And I thought, oh, I think these animal stamps would fit perfect from IOD. So I was excited to test these out. So you all, I could have left this part out, but I was going to share it with you. So I put that sheep stamp on that vellum that comes, that hard plastic that comes with the stamp set. So I had something to grab onto when I got it all inked up. And in my thought, I was gonna be able to ink right on top of this canvas. So you'll see here that no, that did not make a clear stamp by any means. So my first thought was that I wasted that canvas. So I'm onto the cow now and I know that I need to do the tissue paper stamp on it. In my excitement, I didn't put something underneath my stamp. Darn it all. <laughs> you try to keep something nice. It's just hard to keep something nice sometimes. I'm like, shoo, I left the imprint on there. This is what I did. I just stamped that sheep on the tissue paper to get that clear stamp. And then I'm like, I think I would should be able to line this up and maj paj this on top of that imprint that I did. Even though it, the tissue paper's not quite to the edge, I think that'll be okay. It will give it that nice aged look. So I have to say that this actually worked maj pajing it over. I didn't waste my piece of canvas. So this is why I shared this with you because I'm sure we all get going on our crafts and we're like, Oh, well, that didn't work. So let's see what we can do to fix it so we don't waste an item that we have paid good money for. But what worked for putting the Maj Paj on the tissue paper for the ceramic, I actually needed to lift the sheet back up and put Maj Paj underneath it. It wasn't really grabbing. There were, I mean, it was getting air pockets. So I picked that sheet back up very gingerly, put Maj Paj on top of the canvas, and then laid that piece back down. It worked. It was a little bit you know, going very gingerly so I didn't rip my tissue paper, but I did save that piece of canvas. I know it was a dollar nine, but I still didn't want to waste it. So this time when I was doing the cowl, I put the Maj Paj on the canvas and then put the tissue paper where I stamped the cow on top of it. And then added a little bit more of the Maj Paj on the top. I wanted to seal in these labels that I had made for this canister set, so I took them outside and used this Rust-Oleum clear coat and matte just to make sure that I seal this in. So now I mixed up a little bit of the mineral with a little bit of the baking soda, equal parts, and a little bowl, and now I'm going to be proceeding on painting some of these crocs. Now the Rust-Oleum spray paint has dried, that polycrylic has dried, and now I can move on to giving them more of a crockery color of this mineral. So one thing I do know that my cement colored ones that I have painted for my booth have not sold yet, but every one that I have painted this color has, so that's why I decided, yep, I'm going to paint this color, the mineral color. This is what is selling right now, and I know you all as flippers also, you're going to paint and do and remake what is selling. Well, I guess if you can find the stuffs in the thrift stores to make it, that's the only thing about thrifting. You can't guarantee that you're going to find it at this thrift store. You're just blessed when you come upon it. And if you're new to my channel or you have yet to run across a little lazy Susan, a little turntable to be able to do these round objects, keep your eye out for them at the thrift store. Look how easy it makes turning this as a 360 to be able to paint this entire, all the sides of the crock without having to touch it. So 
now that all the other Crocs have at least one coat on it, that first one I started with is dry. So now I can move on to the second coat. And I will say on the second coat, I did add just a wee bit of water just to get the paint moving a little bit more and hopefully not taking off my previous paint. But I will say that I do find that pre-spray painting this definitely is helping putting that one the black underneath and then that polycrylic i can tell the difference because when i did the pig i did not spray that and i really every time i touched it there were certain spots that kind of were tending to come off and so i really need to let that cure before i putting that one into the booth So as that second coat is drying, I'm going over to these lids. These are the lids for some of the Crocs, and these lids right here are for the canister set. So I went and I sprayed those with a Rust-Oleum. I sprayed them with the polycrylic to seal that in. Now I want to give it a little bit of distressing. So I'm just taking some 220 sandpaper. There's a little bit of an edge. I just wanted to give it that worn look to tie in with that marmalade label that I put on it. Then I'm going to be using some fine grit steel wool to take that shiny off. Even though it's a matte polycrylic, it always kind of leaves it shiny. So what I'm doing here is just taking that fine grit sandpaper over the entire piece, just opening up some of that polycrylic. And then to finish these lids up, I'm using some of that Waverly Antiquing Wax just to richen that black up, tie in where I distress those edges, and just bring this piece all together. And now my Mod Podge is dry on these canvases, so I'm going back in with some of that watered down Waverly Antiquing Wax and just giving that aged look. I absolutely love how it's hitting the bumps of this tissue paper and just tying this whole piece together. I probably could have done this first, going with an X-Acto knife and getting the excess of that tissue paper off. Sometimes you just get going and you're like, Oh yeah, I probably should have taken that off first, but that's okay. I take, take it off now, and I'm going to be doing the four sides of these canvases also with that antiquing wax. So I did clean up my, the bottom of my crockery a little bit where there was an edge. I did just take the regular mineral paint without any baking soda. I wasn't sure if the texture would rub off when it got moved, but made sure my bottoms were nice and clean. So yes, I know that this is supposed to be a texture paint, but I guess I have texture touch issues that I did not know. I like it to be textured, but I still want to take any of that sharp edges that, so I'm just running a 220 sandpaper. This is just a sanding mitt type of sponge that Chris uses a lot. So I just wanted to take down any sharp edges, any bumpiness. So now I'm gonna go back in and I am going to seal this chalk paint, this baking soda with chalk paint texture paint with some of this Waverly white wax. So I'm going right in. The first ones I'm gonna do is this cute little birdie. So I'm just going to just use this waxing brush and then wipe on with the brush and then I'll take another rag and then wipe off any excess. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be hitting in that texture and give him that cute cement look with that elephant paint. Then I'll be doing the same thing with the Crocs. I'll be taking that Waverly White Wax, brushing it on the entire piece, and then going back in with the rag and taking any excess off. Yes, I did sand it, but I didn't sand it smooth. I just sanded that so it didn't have any sharp points, so it'll still be grabbing on the texture. So I let these sit overnight so they were good and dry before moving on to getting them stamped. And you can see how cute some of these little lids are just painting them black. So I'm hoping that the black stamping will go really well with these pieces. And I'm super excited to be do using my crockery stamps, my marmalade stamps, and I see Paris stamps from Redesign. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm checking out which stamps I like for which one of the crocs. I'm using those lint rollers to kind of keep, keep that croc in place. And now I'm, this is a little bit smaller one, so I'm gonna try that rolling technique with the stamping block and see how that goes. So I will say it didn't go, go as well as planned. So I actually have to tell you that rubbing alcohol will quickly remove that stamp. I did have that onto the side. I learned the last time I needed to do that. So now I'm re-stamping it without the stamping block, trying to center it. And luckily my daughter is home and I'm like, hey, I need more hands. Can you try pushing down on the stamp for me while I'm holding it? Sometimes you just need the assistance of others to help you. I love doing these, but just figuring out a technique that can get every pieces apart is not always the easiest thing, especially when you're trying to film it. So then that worked out so well. So I was like, hey, her roommate's with her. Why is she's, why I'm doing this in the kitchen? I'm like, hey, I need more hands. If I center it, can you push down on this stamp? Is it conventional? Hey, you use your resources because it does get kind of frustrating to keep having to wipe a stamp off until you get it where you want it to be. Okay, so I had to show you that yes, on the smaller one, I could do it myself, but hey, if somebody's there to help you and willing to lend a hand, always take it. I know a lot of you do these in that dry clay or the molding clay, I'm not sure what it's called. I have not tried that at so far. I like the look of stamping on the Crocs, but we all do what works for us. And after that stays on stamping ink had dried, I took these outside. Luckily, I just happened to be moving some furniture around that needed to be redone. So I'm spraying them with that Rust-Oleum Clear Coat in matte also. And I'll give these a generous coat, make sure that that's not going to come off along with the little piggy and the little birdie also. Well, I absolutely love the IOD farm animal stamp, but unfortunately it, the animals are so big. So I did come across this littler animal stamp set from that stamping.com that had some smaller animals and I really do like it. So this is that box that had that 1980s pink and baby blue country blue on it that I did do that same mineral on it and so I'm just using the stays on on these little stamps too. I did pre-season them by using sandpaper to open up so they stamped really well and I do say that they have that texture like the IOD does. So I do have a couple labels I need to make for three canister jars that I thrifted for 809 for the set of three. So I'm just going to make some storage number one, number two labels. So I went into my design studio on my Silhouette Cameo, picked out this shape for a label. Except this was a nesting label, which meant that they all kind of went inside each other. And I just want one. I want one to be a uniform shape for all three. So I just put that image onto my mat and deleted the ones that I didn't want and then sized it to what I needed it to be. Then I'm going to go in and pick a general font size. When I'm going into putting letters inside a smaller label, I want a clear font. I want something that is kind of chunky so that it doesn't, it that it cuts out well. Sometimes when I, you do too small, it does not cut out well and it's not easy to weld. So I get my storage all printed out and then fit it and size it into where I need it. And then I'll do the number one and number two and number three. But first I'll get to this one size to what I need it to be. And then I'll duplicate it to three different ones and change out the number. So the vinylene is going to be the label for these storage jars. So I wanted to weed out the lettering and the numbers. So I just have the label left behind. And I do find it's easier for these little boutonniere pins for these little bitty letters that I get from Amazon. So to keep my spacing even on all three of these jars, I just took two pieces of masking tape starting from the top and working my way down. 
and then using those lint rollers to stop this from moving around round object it likes to roll and now i'm going to try to center and keep this level while i'm filming for you all Now I'm moving on to that pickle jar and I decided to use one of these IOD transfers. Just simple, something simple for a pickle jar using those lint rollers so it doesn't roll and using the classic pots IOD transfers. And then I picked out this rooster image. I felt like it covered the most surface aired and just taped it on made sure that it was level and center, and then just proceeded to use the stick that they sent with it to get it rubbed on. And then the transfers need to be sealed into something. So I'm gonna be going back to that Rust-Oleum clear mat, again, acrylic spray, taking it outside. And what I'll do is I'll spray it and then I'll take a cotton ball on any excess area that I can to remove any of the overspray. So I thank you so much for watching today's video and what was your favorite and did we inspire you in any way to look at thrift store finds in a new way. I thank you so much for watching today's video and if you are part of our YouTube family thank you so much and if you're new to our channel and checking out the content for the first time please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell. Thanks again for watching. Mm -hmm.